fiancé cheated on me, got pregnant and blamed it on my childhood ex, now everyone pities her and wants me to forgive. So I've been reading posts for a few days now looking for solutions to my own situation, I don't know if this is the right sub or not, I'm new to Reddit and I'm trying to find advice from people who are or have been in the same situation as me. First of all I would like to apologize in advance for my vocabulary and my expressions, I am French and English is therefore not my native language. SS it has now been about two weeks since I discovered that my fiancé, Marie, cheated on me with her ex because, according to her, she felt insecure because of my ex, Samia. It's the dumbest excuse I've heard in my life, but the worst thing is that everyone agrees with her and pressures me to forgive her. I want to hear the opinion of people who are not concerned. I will try to give a little background, it may be long. Samia and I, it's a long story, we met when we were both three years old. Her mother was a nanny at home and looked after several children including me. We were so inseparable that our mothers became friends and decided to put us in the same school. So I practically spent my entire childhood until I was 13 with Samia. We are called the Siamese back then. We used to argue a lot but we were always united with the other children, which meant that we were ostracized. But we didn't care as long as we had each other. When we were 11, our family started to think it wasn't healthy and that we needed to make other friends, it was while trying to separate us that we realized that we were deeply in love with each other, but our families were very conservative. She is of Arab origin and I am of African origin. So we hid the fact of dating. Then one night when I was 13, I made the mistake of going up to her room which was on the first floor through her window. It was dangerous but exciting, I had done that a few times before, we were just chatting at the time and kissing sometime, nothing else, but that day her father opened her door without warning, he caught us kissing and tried to call the police. I tried to escape through the window, I fell, I broke my arm, all the neighbors were out, and it went scandal. The whole neighborhood talk about it, her father never liked me, he wanted to file a complaint against me, even if I was not risking much at that age it was still very humiliating for my family, my father therefore decided to send me to Africa to stay there for an indefinite period, but it was mainly to separate us. I tried to adapt to my new life, she also tried to adapt to her new life but in the end we had managed to keep contact. We spoke via the internet. And when I came back to France after high school, it was as if we had never left each other, we continued to date in secret and at 20, for us it was clear that we wanted to spend the rest of our lives together, we were naive to think it was going to be that simple. We decided to tell our families, saying that we intended to get married, but for them it was as if we had announced the apocalypse, our respective families wanted everyone to get married in its culture, it caused a lot of tension in the neighborhood, already when we were little we had made a lot of noises and everyone always talked about us and gave their opinion on our lives, it was very painful we tried to hold on for a year, she wanted us to go and finish our studies in another city very far from Paris and our families, but my father was sick that time I decided to stay and when my father died I didn't no longer have the strength to fight, I decided to break up, and she decided to go to another city. We had completely lost contact, I was tired of living in the neighborhood where people always talked about us, I chose to move to the student residence of my university. It was a terrible year, I came back to see my family on the weekends and one day at a wedding I met Marie, she had just moved to the neighborhood with her family. We were at the same table, we had spent the evening making jokes, we told each other about our lives, I told her about Samia and she told me about her ex. She told me that she had left her ex after two years of relationship because she did not want to sleep before marriage but her ex could not hold on anymore, she told him to marry her then but he was not ready so she decided to end their relationship. We were two souls in pain, we had become friends over time, we went out together, but I realized that she was getting more and more irritated when I told her about Samia so I stopped. One day she told me that she had feelings for me, I told her that I still had Samia in my heart, she told me that it was an opportunity to forget her, I agreed to date her. It was weird at first to be with another woman but eventually I got used to it and started to like her. As time passed, she became more and more jealous of Samia but I never spoke about her again after she confessed. It was very weird she acted that way. I lived on campus so I didn't know what was said in the neighborhood where I came from, but apparently people were talking about my old stories with Samia, telling anecdotes here and there, the time I broke my arm trying to escape through the window, and other anecdotes. I reassured Marie by saying that was the past, but she always compared herself to Samia, it's true that Samia was very beautiful, but that was beyond my control, she blamed me for having dated such a beautiful woman, yet she never saw her lol. Maybe in a photo I don't know, I always told her that she was the most beautiful in my eyes because she was the one who counted now, but she always had to compare herself to Samia. If we did activities together, she asked me if I had already done it with Samia. What she couldn't stand was that I was intimate with Samia. In short, it was becoming unbearable. Despite everything I asked her to marry me, she was from the same culture as me so it suited my family, I did not have the strength to fight again for this kind of thing. The wedding was to take place in August, a perfect timing for me because I will have finished my studies in July. Other than her insecurity, everything seemed fine until two weeks ago when I got a call from a number I didn't know from a guy who introduced himself as her ex. He told me that he and Marie were still seeing each other and that they had slept together several times. I didn't believe him, 
I thought his ex was trying to sabotage our relationship, but he sent me the screenshots of their discussion. I told him that these things could be easily fabricated. He then asked me to meet. I wanted to warn Marie, but I told myself that I would go first. I had two of my friends accompany me in case he tried to trick me. Then he showed me his phone, the Marie's number, their discussions etc. Everything was there. They saw each other for two months and Marie decided to put an end to their affair a week before he contacted me. I called Marie directly, I told her that we needed to talk. At that time, oddly, I felt no anger, no positive or negative feelings, I was like a spectator watching his life in a film. A friend of mine had the good idea to ask me to record our confrontation, that's what I did, when I told her what I knew, she was shocked, she told me that it wasn't true, that the guy was trying to destroy our relationship, so I showed her the screenshots, she said the same thing I said to the guy, that it was something that could be easily made, I told her I went to see the guy and he showed me his phone their discussion of details about our life that he couldn't know, there she broke down and started crying and asking me forgiveness, I was at her house in her room, her family came to see what was happening, I explained the situation to them, they didn't believe me, I didn't try to convince them, I left. They contacted my family before I arrived in my family house, I explained to my mother what had happened, apparently Marie explained to them that it was because I was seeing Samia in secret that she did it. Apparently Samia was back in town when I didn't even know it. Now everyone says it's because of her. Marie put herself as the victim and Samia and me as the villain. I was so angry that I decided to cut off contact with everyone. It's been 10 days since I've spoken to anyone in the neighborhood. I stayed with a friend from school so no one knows where I am, I put my phone off and only contact my mother on email. I also receive a tones of email from Marie but I deleted each of them without reading them. That's pretty much the story. I don't even know what I'm going to do next. Everyone asks me to forgive her but there is no possibility for me to do so. I only feel disgust for her. But I don't know what I'm going to do or how I'm going to handle the situation. It is complicated. Any advices? Update 1. Hello folk. Well it's been a while since my, 23M, first post, I've been receiving lot of support in my DM and I can't, thank you all enough. People ask me for update, so here we go. I put a link above to my first post for those who want some context. D-Day was very close to my finals, so it's like I was numb and feel like I was an autopilot all along my exams, there were nothing else matters in that period and honestly focusing on myself was all I needed and now I'm officially an engineer. I remained NC weather with Marie, ex fiance 22 F, her family, my family or anyone who mind my business. But in the evening after my exams, when I finally get back to my apartment everything came back like a big wave that feel on me, I was tired and felt abandoned by everyone. I was very anxious about the messages I were going to receive when I turned on my phone so I didn't I just wanted to sleep. I read most people of mine movies of their so with their AP. I get those images but oddly it was me with Marie. I pictured lot of those times we cuddled, making out, etc and I felt dirty, I kept scratching myself then going take a shower to clean myself from the feeling of getting dirty, I did that twice in that evening, I had trouble falling asleep in my bed, I scratched again because it reminded me all those times Marie and I were sleeping in the bed. So I lay down on the floor. The next day, every time the images were too much to handle, I'd started scratching again and went showering to feel clean. I did that 8 times. Right now I'm doing it like 3 to 4 times a day, I'm afraid I will damage my skin. Has this ever happened to any of you? Hope it's not a compulsive mental illness. So the next day I turned on my phone, the messages kept coming, there were like over 200 text messages and many voicemails. I didn't read any of them, I deleted everything. I didn't have the strength to go through the same shit where people told me the same things again and again. I decided to go to my family house, I couldn't keep hiding any longer. I already knew I was going to find people there like every Saturday. I have never been so stressed in my life. When I get home, I found there my uncle, my father's brother and self-proclaimed head of the family after my father passed away, his wife, whom I will call witch because well she is a witch, their children, a few family friends as well as my siblings, 13M, 9M and 5F. For some reason my mother wasn't there. As soon as I got there my uncle started yelling at me and I didn't even acknowledge him, just seeing my little sister running to me for a hug was a blessing, God I love this little girl. All my siblings see me as a role model I felt guilty for not talk to them all this time, usually when I'm there on the weekends, I help with their homework, I do put the youngest to bed and told them some stories that my father used to tell me. And when I am in my own apartment, we manage to talk every night to see how their day was. We're very close to each other. But my uncle won't stop yelling at me. So I got pissed off, I was sitting in front of everyone like I was getting an audition from a jury lol. Which asks me if I found back my sanity. Apparently Marie changed her version, she said she didn't slept with her AP, they just kissed. She said I put so much pressure on her that she confesses something that she didn't do. But I know what I saw on AP's phone. This girl called Marie, I really don't know who she was anymore. She turned to be such a manipulative person. How can someone hide such a vicious nature for so long or am I such a fool who wasn't able to notice anything? Before we start dating, she told me lying was a deal breaker that what she hated most in the world was narcissistic perverts. 
while she embodies everything she hates, it's beyond my little mind. Well at that point I didn't care anymore I've told everyone what I've been through, and that they have the choice to believe either me they've known my whole life or someone they've known a little longer than a year. Which told me that it was impossible, because Marie is a sweet and loving girl, who helps the community and who even volunteers, well I told her that was irrelevant because even Hitler volunteered in some point in his life. My uncle said if it's true that Marie slept with AP that I had the right to not continue the relationship, as if I need some permission to pursue any of my relationships, but when which said that it doesn't matter if it was true because it would be just a mistake made by a youngie, my uncle immediately agreed with her, he's the biggest fool I ever know. He may have an opinion but as soon as his wife says otherwise he changes his mind. I wouldn't even be surprised if his wife cheated on him and he knew it, he's a real doormat. But maybe he is literally afraid of his wife, he is very small compared to her, if you see them walking hand in hand at night you would think of a lady walking with her child. Then which tells me to confess it was because of Samia, 23F. I stayed calm, I replied that I hadn't heard from Samia for two years, my uncle told me if it wasn't because of Samia I can easily forgive Marie. I couldn't take it anymore I told him okay, I will forgive Marie, if he let me sleep with which for two months. There it became chaos, my uncle wanted to hit me but the family friends hold him. I tell them they were hypocrites, they asked me to forgive what they couldn't even imagine on their side, and now I didn't allow anyone to interfere in my life. Which was crying and my uncle said he would never forgive me and I was dead for them. In the moment, I didn't care, I went up to my room because I still have a room there. I felt some regrets actually because they were still my family. I admit that I started having doubts about the reliability of what AP showed me, and for a short time I was wondering if I could forgive her if it was just a kiss, well I came to the conclusion I couldn't. Never. When I was little and my parents couldn't pick me up after school because of their work, it was our neighbor who took care of it because he also had two children in the same school, then I stayed at his place until the evening, he took good care of me, treated me like his child, he gave me little candies each time, gave me presents, I loved him very much, he was a great man in the eyes of everyone, and this kind, helpful man committed suicide one day because his wife had an affair. This is what cheating can do. And I heard a year after that his wife ended up moving to Canada with the kids and her AP. Maybe my hatred of cheating come from that event. So I won't burn myself out to give warmth to others by getting back with Marie, even though, honestly, I don't get why people are trying so hard to get me back with Marie and how the heck it would benefit them. Anyway my mother came back, I guess they told her what happened, she came in my room and the first thing she did were hugging me, asking me about my feeling and my finals, she is such a lovely human being despite the fact she mostly communicates her love through her actions rather than by words. I remember a few years ago I used to work in a fast food while studying, I often came back home around 2 am and she was there waiting for me, and we had small talks while I ate the dinner she reheated for me. We were having hard times to not waking up everybody with our laugh. So we talked about what happened with my uncle and his wife, and I gave her the full version of the why I have to break up with Marie. In my last post I didn't mention the fact I only told my mother that Marie cheats on me but not in what extent, so she believed like everyone else that it was just a kiss. She was sorry for what I was going through, but what surprises me the most were the fact she was crying, well it was the first time in my life I saw my mom crying. Even when my father passed away, she was still smiling and trying to be the support system we needed and would cry only the night in her room when she thought everyone was sleeping. I had a breakdown seeing her crying, and I couldn't stop myself to cry. At the moment she hugged me that I start having a bunch of feeling like sadness, anger, hatred, I felt the hurt deeply. She told me she would accept any decision I made. My mom came back downstairs and everyone left, I didn't ask what she told them, I didn't care that much, I put off again my phone for the next week because I was too tired, I spent most of that time sleeping and catching up with my siblings, gaming with them, and trying to deal with the pain I was feeling. My mother did receive a call from Marie's parents several times and she only told me once she felt I was in a good place to talk about it. Apparently Marie was having a bad time, she spent some time in hospital and she was going insane because I went NC. Marie's parents begged my mom to meet me just one time. So even though she told me I don't have to, I agree to meet them, with Marie, next Saturday. Marie lead the narrative all that time, so it is my time to do so. I don't know how it's going to be and if I should have them come to my house or go to their home. But I will be ready. In my last post, someone gave me the idea of calling her AP pretending I might giving her a second chance if I don't have enough proof, well that's what I did yesterday and I will see him tomorrow, Sunday. He said there is far more to the story I know. He said he won't send me proof, because I might show it to Marie and he then won't have a shot to win her back, but he will show and tell me everything. We will see. Oh yes, people keep asking how things are going between me and Samia. I said in my last post I will contact her to apologize for having her name associated in this mess, even if it's not my fault. Well, before I could do it, she contacted me by email, it's not what you think lol. She was super mad and didn't understand why people keep telling her she messed my couple. But at least she was kind enough to ask me if I was okay with all this mess. I saw the message two days ago, I didn't respond yet. I don't even know what to write, I am like a brainless odd guy right now. But I will do it between the meeting of Marie's AP and her family. I will update you guys. 
Thank y'all. Update 2. Hey guys. A quick update, I guess. So I met yesterday Marie's AP. I am too tired to give all the detail because the situation is becoming really heavy. I met him in the same place as the first time. I of course record everything. Long story short, they dated 4 years on and off and Marie never was the virgin she claimed to be, nor was he the first man with whom she sleep. He was, and still is, crazy about her even though Marie cheated twice, he was willing to work though at each time. But somehow Marie get pregnant and she didn't know who the father was. Still, he was willing to accept the baby as his and didn't want to do a paternity test. Marie's parents got to learn about the pregnancy and wanted her to abort. He says due to the stress, she eventually had a miscarriage. She was too depressed and her family decide to relocate in order to star fresh. He says it's that time where Marie began to develop the idea of born again virgin, whatever that mean. According to him, she felt like her miscarriage is a punishment due to the way she used to live her life. She broke up with him and they decide to stay friends. So far he didn't show me any proof, he says he had changed his phone in the meantime. But he showed me discussions they had during the whole period that I knew Marie. In the texts, Marie said she met someone, me, who had the kind of old romantic relationship she always wanted to experience with someone. Over time she said I was a good guy and she could build something with me. And through our relationship AP became someone she confided in when she was insecure. So he knows practically everything about our relationship, he told me details that only me and Marie know. He says Marie didn't like me at first, she liked the idea that I was able to have an amazing relationship in the past and she wanted the same. He thinks that Marie still doesn't love me, she just loves the idea of having me completely and she never felt that she had me completely so it became an obsession. Well, I don't know if the first part of his story is true or not, but I know that everything he's told me since I've known Marie is corroborated by evidence. I'm getting angrier and angrier and it's a feeling I'm not comfortable with. I don't want to meet Marie's family, but I don't know if it's true that they knew from the start what their daughter was. What is certain is that now I no longer want to meet Marie. I have this huge need to take all the evidences and send them to all people I know because it is unfair that I who was born and lived in my neighborhood must bear the consequences of her bullshit, but at the same time I don't want to do things like that. I do have lot of respected for Marie's parents. I should just send them my evidences and ask them for explanations before deciding whether or not I will meet them. Thank you for all your support on my two previous posts and in my DMs. I'm losing my mind right now while many of you had lived for years with your spouse who cheated on you and some even have children with them. It might be my last update if nothing new happens. So thank you all and I wish a lot of courage to those who are going through difficult times because of infidelity. Update 3, Hi guys. I didn't think I would do an update anymore, but I get a lot of messages asking me what happened since my last update. I would first like to thank those who left comments in my last post, I wasn't in a good place back then but I read all of them and I appreciated all of your advice and comfort. So, to the question, did I meet Marie and her family? Yes, I met them. I met them at my house with my mom. Before the meeting I had sent a long audio message to Marie's parents telling them everything I learned from her AP and saying I was tired of her playing the victim and painting me as the villain. There was nothing left to be saved in the relationship, but if the rumors keep going I was willing to expose Marie in our social circle because it was unfair to suffer from something that I did not do. I told them I had to cancel the meeting unless she come clean. Immediately Marie's mother called me and said Marie had finally told them everything, she had removed her posts and came clean in all of her social networks. I don't use Snapchat or Instagram so I couldn't say if it was true. I had to call one of our mutual friend to check and yes she came clean. I felt trapped in my own game because given how important it is to save appearances in a traditional family like Marie's, I thought she would never do that. So I maintained the meeting. I thought it would be difficult to meet Marie, since every time I thought back to our moments I saw myself scratching a lot, I thought seeing her would be too much, but in the end it wasn't. When we met I almost didn't recognize her, she lost weight in such a short time. She looked very sad and lost. She couldn't put her eyes on me. She didn't even talk to me. We were in our living room and had small talks at the beginning until her mother started to beg me to take her back she was very insecure that's why she did what she did. I had already prepared myself on what I wanted to say and the questions I had so I did not deviate from that, I first asked Marie why did she lie about her past and pretend to be someone she wasn't? She started crying and wouldn't look at me. Her mother said she was always judged on her past and asked me if I knew the truth was I going to still date her? I told her that the answers to the ifs weren't important at that point it just led to imaginary paths and the only path that mattered was the one where she chose to lie about her past and that brought us to where we are, it was the only reality and in that reality I've been in a relationship all this time with someone who didn't exist, who lied to me and who I'll never know what's true in anything she ever said to me. In short, her parents kept defending her but Marie still wouldn't speak. The discussion went around in circles and in some point seeing how determined I was, they asked me for the sake of the love I ever had for their daughter to postpone the wedding and take the summer to think about everything. I didn't expect that request, it confused me, I did not know what to say, my mother, who had been silent from the start, saw that I was struggling to answer. She said she had already spoken with me and I had already made my mind, and if in the future I come to change my mind, she will advise me not to do so but will still support my choice. 
She said the meeting was to give them a closure and not to consider a reconciliation. She told them I was traumatized, I lacked sleep and that I had been acting weird since then, about me scratching myself lol. Nobody spoke for a while, Marie asked to speak to me in private, she insisted it was not to convince me that she would accept my decision if I gave her a one-on-one, -on -one. I told her I didn't think it was a good idea to be in a room alone but we could go outside to walk, and that's what we did. We walked for about half an hour. It was the first time I felt her so vulnerable and where she finally took accountability for her actions. She told me it was true that she had a promiscuous past. She never had any trauma that explains this, she grew up in a loving family, it was probably just her nature, but she started having sex at 12. At 15 she used to have different partner at the same time. At 18 she had already slept with 40 people and she had stopped counting after that. She told me she had never known love before me. She just looked in sex for a way to be loved and to seek validation. She was loved by AP, she never knew a man could love her the way AP did. She thought that was what she was looking for, ultimately she couldn't love AP the way he did. She couldn't stop sleeping with other guys because the only time she thinks she could love was when she get intimate with someone but after that the feeling disappeared and only remained a feeling of emptiness. She eventually got pregnant, started loving her unborn child, but had a miscarriage, that's when she started questioning her whole life. Her family moved away so she can start over. She broke up with AP because she didn't love him but he was a good person and loved their friendship so they never stopped communicating. Even before meeting me, she had heard of me and Samia. The first time was in a fast food where Samia and I used to eat. We were friends with the owner's son and he knew us too and used to offer us kebabs, he always used to take pictures of his loyal customers and other things and put them on the walls of his restaurant. Among the photos there were two with me and Samia. One where we were 11 and another where we were 19. Everyone in the neighborhood knew the story behind the 19 year old picture. It was my birthday. I was born in September so Samia had worked all summer to be able to give me a dream birthday. She bought me a tuxedo and she put on a nice evening dress. She rented a limo waiting for me in front of my house, she promised me a dream evening, we got into the limo but 200 meters later the limo stopped, she said we had arrived at destination, but we got off in front of the modest fast food, I was too embarrassed to have put on a suit have a ride in a limo and ended up in that fast food, she had that kind of humor. But that was cool, we ordered the same kebabs that the owner used to offer us and she bought a muffin and put a candle on it, lit it and asked me to blow on it, the owner had taken a picture in that moment and liked to tell the prank that Samia had done to me, even if she did gave me the greatest birthday after but that is another story. So when Marie found out about the story, she asked for more, people told her other stuffs here and there and that's when she said she wanted to experience this kind of love. When she met me and knew that I was the guy in the picture, she wanted to know me. She was intimidated by the story she heard of me, and before she knew it she had started lying to hide her past. And when she realized that she was already attached to me, she couldn't take those lies back because if she told me the truth, I would never want to see her again. She felt guilty throughout our relationship, she discovered that she was in love with me it was the first time she felt love without having to sleep with someone, and the only reason other than her lies she couldn't sleep with me where she was scared that her love would vanish after that. Our relationship was everything for her but she thought the lies she told meant that we had no future if I found out, she felt unworthy of me that's what fed her insecurity about losing me, and she hated herself so much she was sabotaging the relationship and one of her behaviors was going back to her demons and cheating on me with AP. Reality hit her hard when I found out the truth, and that's where she lost herself, she didn't know she was able to turn into a monster in order to try to keep me in her life. She made up excuses, she tried to guilt me into staying with her. When she realized it wasn't going to work, she passed out and spent time in a hospital. She didn't want to live anymore not because she lost me, but because she realized what she had become and it was unbearable. She says she didn't want to force me to be with her anymore and even if I forgive her, she would never forgive herself. She says she started going to therapy to find out why she did what she did and who she really was. She says it might be a long process but if I could find compassion in my heart to forgive her and help her be a better person she would be grateful to me all her life. I won't gonna but at that moment I was so weak when I hear her request that I almost agreed to keep in touch in order to help her. I had so much empathy with this woman who hurt me it was crazy. But I knew from the moment I saw her that the feelings I had for her didn't no longer existed. I explained to her that I needed to distance myself to heal, and that she didn't need me to heal, that she thinks she needs me, but to heal she have to face his things herself and that's the only way she can grow out of it. She says she already knew what I was going to say but if she didn't try she would have regrets all her life, she tells me she accepts my decision but she is not giving up on me, and she will seek to become the best version of herself and she believes in the future we will reunite. I wanted to tell her that I could never be with someone who cheated on me or who has cheated before, but I kept quiet. I just said that I had moved on and that it wasn't good for her if I gave her hope, she said nothing, we ended up talking about something else. Her parents contacted her and told her they were already home, so I walked her at her house before going I told her I will be NC it was the only healthy way to heal, she agree, but that will be so hard because we will be in the same neighborhood and we might run into each other from time to time. She asked me for a last hug, I hug her and I left and frankly I felt lighter after this talk. I had no more anger and I still have no anger in me. 
Maybe it will come back in the future as I have been told healing is not linear. That's basically the meeting. So to the question did I meet Samia? Yes I met Samia twice but I'm not sure this is the right sub to talk about it. Maybe I'll do a final update before going to my summer vacation for anyone interested to find out what happened and where I'm going from here. Thank you all, you were great help all along.